Good evening, everybody. I am hoping that you have had a wonderful Sunday afternoon. It's been so beautiful outside. And, uh, just so thankful for the sunshine and just makes you feel good when the sun is shining. And um, what a joy it is to gather with you again tonight via Facebook Live. And um, we're just excited to have you. We're going to give everybody a few minutes to kind of pop on. Good evening, folks. Good to see you. Good to see you. Love all those um, smiling icons that are coming up right there. So thank you so much for popping in and uh, letting us know that you're here. And um, we appreciate that. Sometimes, um, sometimes folks are just kind of popping on, but they're not saying anything. And then it's kind of hard for us to know who's here and who's not here. So uh, if we were taking roll call, I've been missing a few of y'all, but I know that you're here. So make sure that you say something, you give us a wave or something and let us know that, uh, that you're joining us tonight. And uh, again, we're just so, so honored and privileged to be able to come to you, come together with you again uh, tonight in this place. And so um, while, we're, while we're letting everybody else pop on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind you like I did this morning, um, please, if you have not gone over and uh, found our Facebook page, we uh, ask that you would do that. Go over and find it and like it and follow it. Uh, click both of those buttons. You want to like it and you want to follow it. And uh, anybody that you know of that's watching on our Facebook group that maybe doesn't attend our church regularly, that Facebook page, that's where we're going to be streaming from. Um, and just the not so distant future. So um, anybody that's, that comes here looking for it is gonna kind of be wondering what happened to it. So we're trying to get everybody uh, to go on over to the Facebook page and like it and follow it. So um, that's where we're gonna be streaming uh, very, very shortly uh, from that page instead of from this one. So uh, just make sure that you get that done. And I've seen a lot of you do that this afternoon. Thank you so much. And, uh, for getting your friends to, to do that as well. We appreciate it very much. So um, how many of you know that we serve a mighty and a powerful and an awesome God? Amen. Can I get some thumbs up for that? Um, shoot me some thumbs up right there and then let me know. Yes, we know um, that we serve a, a mighty God, a powerful God, an awesome God. And, you know, as I was out in the swing this afternoon, um, just the Lord just began turning my heart to a totally different direction for music this afternoon than what I already had planned. And I, I came in just a little bit ago and I told my husband, I said, I don't know where I'm going tonight. But the Lord's just kind of changed uh, the direction that that I originally um, had chosen for tonight. So, But I just want us to think about the fact and remind ourselves of the fact that we have victory in Jesus. Amen. We have victory in Jesus tonight. So whatever you're facing, whatever you've you've come on to this live stream battling okay regardless of what it is whatever you've come on to this live stream battling tonight i want you to know that jesus christ is right here he is ready to meet you right where you are right there in your living room your dining room your 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 car the break room at where, wherever you are watching this for from jesus christ is ready to meet you and he is ready to to tap into your need right now and he just just i just invite you right now as we worship tonight if you would just bring those needs to him and just turn them loose to him just lay them at his feet and allow him to give you the victory in those situations amen we can't do it ourselves but we serve a mighty mighty powerful wonder working miracle working god amen okay let's sing praises to the lord tonight
day that's going to be when we see our victory come to fruition. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for that. You know, we find um, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. <laughs> Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. What an amazing statement there that Paul is making. You know, and I, I'm pretty sure that his mind probably also went back to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 54, verse 17 says, No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. I said it a few minutes ago, and I will say it again tonight, right here. I don't know what you tuned in this broadcast struggling with tonight, but I don't believe that the Lord has led me this direction this evening for no reason. And I believe that there's some of you out there.
that right now. God, we're going to see victories. The battle's not ours. It is yours. Lord, we're going to see victories in the situations that we're living in. And God, just because we're loving you and serving you does not mean that we don't go through battles. And we thank you for this. In thy name we pray. Amen. Have your Bibles with you. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7. And now I know why she came out here to practice. She actually probably read my notes. No, she didn't. It's exactly where I was going about something. God had just been dealing with me. And I will share some things with you in just a moment. But in the meantime, pray with us. Uh, we're going to be meeting and making some arrangements to start softly opening up the church. And let me give you a very simple explanation. I want you to think of it like this. We're, we're trying to solve that problem of that three and four year old and that 85 and 86 year old. Big gap. We're trying our best to bring everything into a center and where we can meet everybody's needs. And so it's a lot harder than you think it is I know many of you know the social distancing part process. You've seen the chairs that have been separated in a lot of churches. You see where a lot of departments are going to have to be closed for a season. We understand this, and we're working towards all of that. But I want you to know more than anything else, God is still in complete control. He's still on the throne, and His church is still very powerful. So with that in mind, and you go into the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, I want to stop and pray very specifically tonight. Uh, Ron and Terry Pitts needs a very special touch. Terry does in her body. She'll start another round of treatment. And then there are others that are dealing with situations. We have some that are having surgeries that have been scheduled the next couple of days, next couple of weeks. These surgeries now that have been, open, have been closed are now being opened back up. But it's very difficult because a lot of them will have to go into those areas by themselves, stay through the whole procedure by themselves, and be just discharged to the cars. So could we pray right now that God would just be with those that are facing tests and things the next couple of days and weeks that have been rescheduled? Father, God, we thank you that in the midst of the storms, you are there. Lord, we pray for those that are going through cancer treatments those that have elective surgeries that are lined up, 
God, those that are going back to things that were planned, even heart casts, God, that were planned prior to this time, now we're pre prepping and getting ready for those things. Lord, I pray that you would give peace, guidance, and direction. May they know that you are with them in this time, Father. And we thank you for this. In thy name we pray. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 7, looking at verse 21 through 23. I, I preached on part of this text years ago, matter of fact, a couple different times. But it just, it hits so home to me. It just, just deals with my heart in a very special way. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I thought all my battles would be over. I thought that once I accepted the Lord as my Savior, everything would be rosy, everything would be great. And a lot of times, a lot of new Christians will come to you and say, Well, Pastor, I thought when I accepted the Lord as my Savior, everything would be good. Can I tell you, battles never cease. Spiritual battles never cease. Physical battles never cease. Emotional things never never cease from our life. The nation of Israel has now come to the edge of the promised land. Moses has given them great explanation of what's going to have to take place. I'm going to give you kind of a, a nutshell and we'll drop into the scripture very quickly. The people of Israel are at Kadesh Barn and their 40th year into what they're about to do, they're about to, from the deliverance of Egypt, they're about to go into the promised land. They think all these things are done. And Moses makes this proclamation, shares this with them. Deuteronomy 7, 21 through 23. Thou shalt not be affrighted at the enemies that you're going to face. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. The Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee little by little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. Now if you had time tonight, and we had time tonight, we would go to the book of Joshua. And we would find that in the recordings of Joshua, it would take Israel over seven years to defeat the nations that were in the promised land. It would take about the first seven or eight chapters. You would find that there is conquering nations to the south, and there's conquering nations to the north. He literally goes right down in the middle of the promised land and just starts conquering the enemy little by little, little by little. And he moves from one country to another country as he defeats them. With that simple analogy in mind, I want you to think of it like this way today. My greatest spiritual battle was won when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I defeated, I am now a new creation in Christ Jesus. I know that I'm on my way to heaven. But now, I have to fight these little battles every day. Let me just go ahead and share with you. A lot of times in our own personal life, each one of us have things that we have to give to the Lord. We have to remind God that we, this, I'm still overcoming this. This is still a battle. This is still a weakness in my life. But obeying the Lord, the nation of Israel went after one enemy at a time. If I tried to solve all my spiritual problems at one great moment, it would overwhelm me. If I tried to solve all my family problems at one great sweep, it would overwhelm me. Can God do it? Yes. Does God want to do it many times? Yes. But more than anything else, He wants you and I to fight the battle daily. He wants us to die to ourselves daily, as Paul talked about. But win that battle daily. We conquer the enemy daily. His mercies are new every day. His blessings are new every day. He has promises for us every day. Matter of fact, he said the worries of today were to be for today. Don't carry them into tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow, there's already going to be things there tomorrow that you're going to have to deal with. So we don't try to just solve the problems at one sweep, but we give them to God daily. <coughs> Many times people have asked me, Pastor, 
How do you deal with things? How do you deal with all these different things that are going on in your life? Can I tell you? It's real simple. One day at a time, one moment at a time, one problem at a time. If you try to do absolutely everything at one time, it will overwhelm you. The nation of Israel had to figure this out. They had to realize that little by little, they had to deal with the things that were in front of them. Go with me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. They were not running out of blind faith. They had been guided and directed by the cloud by day and the fire by night for over 40 years. God had proved himself to them all the way from the Egyptian bondage, all the way to the promised land. God had proved himself to them. God had proved that he would not leave them. But Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee out from the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, that thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Every once in a while, we need to stop and realize how blessed we really are. How many battles we've already won through Christ Jesus. How many victories we've already won through the Lord. Brothers and sisters, for you and I to take inventory, for us to step back and to realize that there are more victories behind us than there are defeats. There are more battles that we've won through the grace and knowledge and understanding of God than the things that we've lost. Oh, granted, some of you tonight may be going through some very serious situations. In my own personal life, there are things that I have to give to God every single day. I have to battle through things all the time. But little by little, day by day, moment by moment, I give it back to God. And I let God have it. Psalms 32, verse 8 and 9. And I've used this scripture before a few times, and some of you will remember it when I share it with you. But Psalms 32, 8 and 9 gives us a very simple understanding of how we respond to things. Psalms 32, 8 and 9. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Now this is what God says. God says, I'll teach you the way you need to go. I'll guide you with mine eye. Then verse 9. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which hath no understanding, whose mouth must be held with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. You know what he's saying? Don't be rebellious. Don't be self-willed. He's talking about the horse that's just going to run away. Just the knee-jerk reaction that we just, we're just going to win the battle. And then like the mule that just sits there stubbornly and says, what's the use? He says, don't do that. Keep your eyes upon me. Rebellious and self-willed and headstrong is an embarrassing description of humanity today. Rebellious, self-willed, and headstrong. You ever heard this phrase? You're like a bull in a china shop. You're so hard-headed. You're so stubborn. Do you know what they're actually saying to you? is the personality that you have in that situation is what is taking hold of you. You're like a bull in a china shop. literally means that you don't care what happens. You're just going to bull your way through it. And you're stubborn as a mule. literally means that you're going to sit down and not be moved. Matter of fact, we almost want to sing the gospel song, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. And that's what we say to God. And God tells us sometimes, wait a minute. You've got to win this battle. You've got to fight this. And you've got to fight it with me. Don't go so far ahead that I'm not there. And don't be so far behind. But look at my eyes. Look at my direction. Seek my will in this. And I will go with you. In the New Testament, we see in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13, that we're going to go through spiritual battles. Now, I, I realize that we know to everything there is a season. But I have to tell you, there are sometimes, there are some seasons of spiritual battles that seem like they never end. There are some spiritual battles that some of you are facing tonight 
that you felt like you have fought that battle your whole life. You have gone through crisis after crisis, valley after valley, dry spell after dry spell. You've gone through times and times again where it just, everything you was doing, it felt like you was fighting an uphill battle. But can I assure you of one thing, God has been with you all the way. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. And he has given you strength for the next day. Some people that have fought battles many years, and they wonder how on earth they're going to fight it. If they'll take a little bit of inventory and realize how good God's been to them and how far they've been in that battle, God will bless them. I could not help but think, when we're giving timetables, that you've got to do this in so many days or so many weeks, or you've got to take this treatment in three-week increments, or you've got to do this. We start counting the days. But you know what? God is always there with you. God is always there. Finally, my brethren, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You cannot do it by yourself. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and wickedness in high places. Sometimes the enemy will come in like a flood. Sometimes he will come in and wrap his arms around us and whisper in our ear. But the enemy keeps coming. He keeps coming. And I have to win that battle little by little, day by day by day. I've been with some of you through some very long battles. This is some of the statements that some of you have made through the years. I don't know how much longer I can take it, Pastor. I don't know how much more of this that I can handle. I don't know how much more of this that my family can deal with. And at that moment... All I can do is pray with you. But can I tell you today, you are days, weeks, months, and years ahead of where you said one time, I can't take it another day. God has been with you little by little, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 tells us this. We walk not, in, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Spiritual things that has got itself wrapped around us, and we just pull it down. I don't know about you, but have you ever tried to pull vines out of a tree. If you grab them all and try to pull, you can't get them. But if you start pulling them vine by vine by vine, piece by piece, little by little, before you know it, you can pull the whole thing down. But if you can pull and pull on it, you're not going anywhere. Matter of fact, a lot of times it'll pull back on you and drop you. But if you'll break it down little by little, God will help you with it. God will help you with what's going on in that very moment. I could not help but think today the nation of Israel was walking into the promised land and said, you know what, we have, we have gotten all this way and we've been here for 40 years fighting this. Can't we just stop the battle? And God said, no, you've got to defeat the enemies in the promised land little by little. We're coming up on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday is coming up very soon, next week. I understand something. When God chose those men, and after they had been to go into the upper room and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the upper room, they had to then refight the battles little by little. No one to lead them anymore. Jesus had now ascended to the right hand of the Father. They had to create leadership. They had no buildings. They had no budget. They had no academic degrees. But little by little, day by day, 
God started adding to the church daily such that would be saved. The Bible says in Acts 2.39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So he's really saying to you and I today that there are times that we can only win the battle little by little, one person at a time, one situation at a time, one thing at a time, one moment at a time, one crisis at a time. That's how the new church was. They dealt with it one thing at a time. They dealt with it, the Bible says, literally the church grew daily. They that gladly received the word were baptized, and there were added to them over 3,000 souls at one time because of one service, little by little. And from that point, God started adding back to the church daily. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying to you that under the power and unction of the Holy Spirit, I can take back what the enemy has stole from me personally. There's a lot of things in our life that we have to look at. And, and, and even as far as looking at getting back into the church setting, we're going to have to take it back little by little. And it's not what the enemy has stole from us, but it's out of, out of courtesy to our fellow brethren and sister in Christ. But you've got to realize, walk that you and I have is more important than the physical building. What if we were told that we could never go back to that building again? What if we were told that we were an underground church for the rest of our life? Would we flourish or would we perish? If you ask that question in China, one of the greatest churches that's ever grown, you ask that, church, that question in Iraq and Iran, you'll find a great church that is flourishing. Why? Because they realize this was taken away God gave them this. They felt an opportunity to be used by God, and God used it in a different way. So we've got to, in my own personal life, I've got to take back daily what the enemy tries to steal. And I've got to tell brothers and sisters that the enemy will come after me very hard. Turn with me, if, turn with me if you would to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verses 10 and 13. Isaiah 28, 10 and 13. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. God, I got to grow a little bit. 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 We forget when we first came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, exponentially we were growing dramatically in a very quick way, and we felt the Lord, and we got involved in the Word of God, and we started growing. But the Bible very specifically says that there are some that stayed as babes, but then there are others that went on and kept growing and started taking the meat of the Word of God and growing and growing. It's a principle with you and I, brothers and sisters, when we have spiritual things in our life, we have to seek the answer. I've had a few people in the last couple of days, especially during the book of Mark, will shoot me questions and ask me questions about what we're studying. And rather than give them the answer, I'll say to them, you're looking in the wrong direction. Look over in this direction. Look at these scriptures. Look at this text. What are you doing? I am teaching them that little by little, they can learn to find the answers in God's word themselves. And that's what God did for you. That's what God did for me. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Isaiah 28 verse 13 says, The word of the Lord was upon them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, and they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. God must remind me daily that I have to be nourished in his word and I have to grow. Brothers and sisters, if I want to defeat the enemy in my life, I've got to realize that I can gain ground. We sing a song in the church world. We talk about taking back what the enemy has stole from us. 
And, and it's a wonderful rally song. It's a great song for revival. That I'm taking back what the enemy stole. And then every once in a while we'll have somebody stand up and shout of a great victory. That God has taken, brought back something huge. And all we hear is about how big that miracle is. But we don't hear is how little by little they had to pray. And how daily in and daily out they had to seek the Lord, seek His guidance, seek His direction, seek His will, be patient with God, not run ahead of God, not run behind God, but wait upon God. And God brought them through it. God brought that situation. But in our mind, all we hear is this great big victory. So we want to know how do we win the big battles? And Jesus is saying just to you and I, just the battle of today. Just walk with me faithfully today. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 17 through 19. Listen to what he says here. Deuteronomy 7, 17 through 19. If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are more than I, how can I dispose of them? Lord, that battle's so big. That one's too big. I can't deal with that one. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shalt well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and unto Egypt. For us to win the battle in front of us, we got to realize how many battles we've already won behind us. We've got to every once in a while take inventory of how far God has brought us and this is what he says to the nation of Israel. Go back and read this. Deuteronomy 7, 17. If thou shalt say in thine heart, imagine in my heart, these nations, they're more than how I can dispose of them. Thou shalt not be afraid, but shall well remember the Lord thy God that did unto Pharaoh and unto all of Egypt the great temptations which thine eyes saw and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do all the people of whom thou art afraid. He says, if you will remind yourself of how good God was to you when he brought you out of bondage, the battle in front of you will not be quite as hard. Can I make it a little plainer? You and I were sinners bound for hell. You and I were bound up. There were things in our heart and our life that had us on our way to hell. We accepted Christ as our personal Savior. He set us free. He wrote our name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is the biggest battle I ever won when I was set free from the enemy. There are other battles in my life that I have won large battles that I have to stop and I have to go back and remind myself of how good God is. That that I'm facing today, that I may face tomorrow, that that I may be facing with my family. I have to remind myself, this battle's nothing compared to that one I've already won. This battle's nothing compared to what you brought me through. Deuteronomy 7, 21 through 23. Thou shalt not be frightened at them. The Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out these nations before thee one enemy at a time, or little by little. I don't know who I'm talking to this evening, but there's somebody that I just keep in my heart that you're fighting a battle that is so hard, that is so large, that is so huge, and you're wanting to win the big thing all at once, and God is just telling you, take care of today. Win this battle today. Trust me with today. Trust me with tomorrow. Don't look at, for the end results, but look for what you're doing right now. Psalm 78, verse 42 and 43. They remember not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field 
of Zion. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Take inventory a moment. Just stop right now. And in your spiritual life, take inventory of how good God has been to you. God still wants to win the battle in front of you. God still wants you to be more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You will overcome that that is in front of you. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 5. Listen to this. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing, and if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given unto you. Patience is something that we don't have. God says, little by little, let me work this out. I already know the details, I already know the circumstances, but let me work it out. Romans 5, 3-5. through 5. And not so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation worketh woo, patience. God, I want it done now. I want the answer now. I want the victory right now. He told the children of Israel to go into the promised land, and you're going you're gonna to defeat the enemy one at a time, and it was going to take them over seven years to do that. Little by little, we grow in our walk with God, we grow in our faith with God. That tribulation worketh patience, patience brings experience, and experience brings hope. We have to be moved by the Holy Spirit, and we have to take back what the enemy has stole, but we don't take back the whole territory all at one sweeping moment. Because that battle's not ours, it is His. But we move as He moves us. We gently move, and we are, it's like I said this morning, there are times that God will tell you to be still, there are times that God will tell you to move, but we move with Him. Deuteronomy 7, 21 through 23. Let me read it to you in a modern version. So don't be intimidated by them or by whatever you're dealing with. Don't be intimidated by it. God, your God, is among you. God is majestic. God is awesome. God, your God, will rid you of these nations bit by bit. You won't be permitted to wipe them all out at once, at least the wild animals take over and overwhelm you. But God, your God, will move them out of your way and he'll throw them into a huge panic until there's nothing left of them. Bit by bit, precept by precept, day by day, prayer by prayer, moment by moment. May we pray? Heavenly Father, we're all fighting battles. All fighting battles in many different ways right now. Some of them we just want it, we just want it to be over immediately. And God, there are times that those battles, they will just go away. And we wonder sometimes if our spiritual walk is not as strong as others. Because we feel like they're always walking in victory and we're, we're not. But God, if the truth were to be known. Those had to fight it one day at a time, one prayer at a time, one scripture at a time, one moment at a time, one breath at a time, one man at a time. And God, may we learn to walk in victory. May we be patient. May we learn by life experiences that you will not leave us you will not forsake us. You will always 
be there. May we walk in victory today. In thy name we pray. Amen. I'm going to see the victory. Yes. I'm going to see the victory. Yes. Miracle worker, promise keeper, I 